Hey guys, welcome to the show, Inside the World of Women's Soccer. This is your host, Eric Beltran. Today on the show, we have a special guest, Sally Gardner. Sally is a current freshman on the Liberty Women's Soccer team. And unfortunately, in the buildup to her spring leading into her freshman season, she tore ACL. And so we know injury is such a big part of sport, and we hope this content resonates with you or blesses you in some way. Thanks for tuning in. Hey guys, welcome to the show. So excited to be able to have our guest, Sally, with us. So Sally is a current freshman on the Liberty Women's Soccer team. Um... And so this episode, uh, like we like to talk about the recruitment process and everything involved with women's soccer in general, but um, this will strike a chord and hit home with a lot of our audience because it's about injuries and specifically ACL tears, okay? And so Sally tore her ACL um, the spring leading into her freshman year, and so she actually didn't get to compete her freshman year. And so kind of want to just lead off with, um, take us back to the injury, thoughts going through your head, um, did you know right away, and kind of um, what that looked like for you at the time. Yeah, so I tore it in a high school soccer game in March of 2022, and when it happened, I actually didn't think I tore my ACL because my kneecap dislocated um, at the moment, so I kind of thought that was it, and I also didn't hear a pop, which I know a lot of people normally hear a big, loud pop when they tear their ACL, Um, so I I didn't think at first that I did, but then... Um, I went and saw a doctor two days after it happened, um, and he was kind of like, well, there's a couple possibilities, but there's a really good chance you tore your ACL, obviously, you gotta get an MRI to make sure, but at that point I was kind of like, well, I feel like that's probably what it is, so, I mean, when I first found out, like, the day of the MRI, um, when I got my results, it was weird, because I, I wasn't really super upset, I was kind of just like, I think I was just in shock. I was just numb. I didn't cry. (laughs) Like, the day that I found out, I didn't cry. I didn't cry for, like, two weeks after. Um, I kind of was just like, well, okay. And I think I also had that, like, competitive mindset where I was kind of just like, okay, well, what now? Like, what can I do to help? So I, like, immediately texted my physical therapist and, like, set up an appointment for the next day. Um, I kind of didn't really give myself time to be sad at first. (laughs) And I think the timing of this is pretty important too. And so, you know, a a lot of recruitment for women's soccer happens two years out, okay? And so a lot of players will kind of commit their junior year, either either the fall or spring semester of their junior year. But, um, you know, you had already committed to come to Liberty. You already knew that was kind of on the cards. And so um, was there any fear going through your mind about about what that would look like or like, oh, shoot, this isn't going to be a fun, fun phone call to make or anything like that? Oh, yeah, I was definitely nervous. But at the same time, obviously, I know the coaching staff here is um, all amazing people, and you guys were just so nice about it, um, you know, telling me you were praying for me. I had players from the team reaching out, telling me they were praying for me. Um, so that was super encouraging. Obviously, I was really nervous about the fact that I'd be coming in and not able to play. I was mm-hmm. kind of like, well, nobody's going to know, you know, what kind of player I am, and I'm kind of going to have to prove myself over again because I didn't know, you know, how I'd be when I come back, uh, which is obviously still something that I'm working through. So, I mean, overall, I was definitely nervous, but I think being in this environment made it a lot better (laughs) than it could have been. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Well, for our audience that isn't very familiar with Sally's game, she's awesome. We can't wait to have her back. Um, She's usually bombing up and down the left wing, and so, um, yeah. We're, we're super excited to have you back here soon. But um, a lot of our audience won't know about like the timeline or the process of an ACL tear. Um, and obviously, you know, that's hopefully that's for a good reason that they haven't had one. But um, kind of just walk us through what that looks like. I know obviously some of it depends like a successful operation. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, walk us through like maybe some of the major checkpoints of your process. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize how different it is for every single person that goes through it. So there's kind of this idea that, oh, it's a nine month recovery. That's kind of like the typical recovery. Um, And so when I first found out, I didn't really know anything about the recovery process, obviously. Um, So I was kind of just like, well, I guess I'll just be out for nine months and then I'll be back. Um, But it's actually a lot more complex than that. Obviously um, there's progressions that you have to get to um and there's certain checkpoints and there's kind of this um like i said there's like everyone thinks it's nine months but there's also different milestones that um people expect you to hit so for example a lot of people say oh you can start running right at three months um i wasn't ready to run at three months um i didn't start running till i think a little after four 
Um, so, you know, obviously there's that. And then a big one is range of motion, which it comes super easily to some people, not easy to other people. For me, I still don't have full range of motion, which is pretty frustrating because I've been working on it every day since the beginning of my surgery. Um, and then obviously the most important thing is getting your strength back and um, kind of trying to balance out your two legs because it gets right after surgery you pretty much lose all of your muscle um, so you kind of have to rebuild that um, also something I'm still working on um, and then obviously there's the learning how to do everything again so it's not really as simple as oh you're ready to jump now you're gonna be jumping how you were before it's kind of like okay you're ready to jump but when I first start jumping I'm like I feel like I've never jumped in my life so yeah. it's like it's weird because um, I remember I've had other injuries, obviously none major like this, um, but it's kind of like, oh, when my body heals, it kind of feels the same as it did before. But with mm -hmm. this, it's kind of like every single thing you do um, and every progression, it just feels completely new to your body and you have to pretty much teach yourself how to do everything again and get used to stuff feeling different. And yeah, so that's kind of the rehab process. And then obviously returning to play is different too because you kind of... You don't lose everything. I mean, there's muscle memory, but you, I mean, for me, like soccer stuff, when I first started doing it, it was like my brain knew what I wanted to do, but my body didn't know how to do it yet. And I kind of just have to be patient and keep working on that, so. Yeah, so something you mentioned just then kind of, um, you know, I just want to talk about this piece a little bit. So you're talking about, okay, yes, my, my mind knows what to do and I want to do this. I want to do it a certain way like I used to before, but my body's just not physically capable of doing that right now. Mm -hmm. And so, like, how does that piece tie into, like, uh, you know, frustration levels or mental health? I know so many athletes, they kind of associate their success in their sport or, like, their ability to be on the pitch to, you know, that's my worth, that's my value, that's my identity, okay? And so um, kind of walk us through some of that process because, obviously, you, you lose that piece of you. And so, like, you're eager to prove yourself at this next level and you've worked, you know, the majority of your life to get here um, and all of a sudden that's taken away from you. And mm -hmm. so can you, can you speak on that a little? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a physical part of the rehab process, and then you've probably heard this before, but the mental side of things, in my personal opinion, is even more difficult, and I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting that, um, because normally I face all of my, I don't know, challenges, especially physical ones. Um, I'm just kind of like, well, if I work hard enough, I'll be able to overcome it, or if I just, you know, focus long enough, I'll be able to do it. But with this, it's kind of like, no matter how hard you work, there's still going to be things that you can't do and that are just not going to be the same. And that's super frustrating mentally yeah. because um, I've always had that mindset of, like, competitiveness. And, you know, this is just, like, something that I can just work hard and, like, overcome. But there's been so many things in this process that I've put everything into and done everything right, and I still don't get the results that I want or it's still not working out how, you know, how it's supposed to. I mean, everyone's different. And that part's hard too because then you're comparing yourself to other people's journeys and you're like well they came back in so many months why am I not ready to come back um so obviously mentally it's super tough it's really really easy to get in this kind of I don't know really negative mindset where you're like I can't do anything I'm never going to be back I'm just never going to be the same um but honestly like that ties into your physical health too so it's like the more negative you are, the worse your body's going to respond to any physical training. So that's something that you have to constantly fight against. Um, and then obviously just, I mean, missing your sport is a huge part of it mm -hmm. too. It was super hard when I first wasn't able to do anything. I couldn't even, you know, hardly get out of bed or go to the bathroom by myself. I mean, like, as an athlete, that's pretty much the worst it can get. Um, right. So super tough. And then obviously, like you said, it's really easy to tie your identity into your sport and that's definitely something I struggled with and I definitely had made soccer an idol in my life at certain points so obviously getting injured kind of forced me to you know realize that and look at it and be like whoa I was putting everything into soccer so now without it I don't even know who I am or what else I like to do and so that part's hard but um, I mean I think talking to people about it helps um, and not keeping it all inside because then it bottles up. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different, I don't know, coping mechanisms that I've had to learn because I've never really struggled a lot with mental health before until right, this. Right. Um, so I mean, in a way, I guess it was good that I got to kind of 
you know, see what helps and, I don't know, be able to help other people, hopefully. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so, you know, obviously our audience has, has no exposure to Sally, but I just want to give kind of a brief story that, that talks about her character. And so... Um, we were playing our first exhibition in the fall season and we traveled with everybody and so Sally got to come on the trip but we were in Boiling Springs, North Carolina um, and I, I had gotten up early because I was presenting a Game Scout that morning okay and so I wanted to have breakfast early make sure my presentation was good make sure um, you know any any last minute adjustments that were, were all good so I was down and, and Sally and her teammate were actually um, down in the breakfast area before I even got there and so um, I thought they were doing homework, uh, but I was like, okay, well, classes haven't even started yet, so what's going on here? Um, but they're actually reading their Bible, okay? And so, like, that, that moment was so sweet to me because I was like, man, like, we're, we're bringing in the right kids. Um, she's got a good head on her shoulders, and so it was really encouraging for me to see, like, first thing in the morning, her and her teammate cracking open, you know, the Word of God and getting into it. And so, later that trip, the guy that was kind of um, working in the breakfast area, he came up to me and he's like, man, this is awesome, like... Um, the fact that you have 18 to 22 year old young women just so passionate and so adamant that they um, are in the word is, is really encouraging to me and he started crying and so um, that 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 type of stuff to me is really really cool and so I just want to open it up the door for like how did you bring in your, your faith into this how did you integrate your faith into your injury um, and kind of talk about like what that's looked like for you yeah um, quite honestly I I'm super grateful that it happened looking back because um, getting her has been the thing that has gotten me so close to God and I don't think that without it I would be where I am because obviously um, I was a Christian before and I was following God before but never in my life have I actually had to you know like give up control and actually mm. learn how to surrender yep. because I've never really gone through anything super tough. I mean, obviously I've had hard moments, but this is something where in the moment it kind of feels like every single thing has been taken away. I mean, I was in so much pain physically. I was not able to play my sport. I knew that I had, you know, a year of recovery ahead of me. And like, that's a really tough place to be, um, especially being a high level athlete. Um, so yeah, I really, that was the first time I've had a really learn how to trust God because I always say, oh, I trust God, God's plan, and all this stuff, but until you actually have to, mm -hmm. you don't really know what that's like. Um, so that was something that I honestly have, I'm still learning that now, but that's something that I learned within the first couple months. Um, when my injury first happened, I kind of, I mean, I went through the classic kind of being mad at God, kind of being confused. I didn't really feel like, you know, opening my Bible and praying and stuff. Um, but I obviously got to a point where I was like, I literally, I don't even know how to function anymore without, you know, something to hold on to. So, um, I kind of told myself that I was going to, you know, seek God and just kind of make an effort to be in the Word because that was something that I could control. Um, so I started doing that and then it just like completely changed the way I looked at everything. Um, and it's been honestly like what's gotten me through this because, you know, you really have no idea what's going to happen next. I have no idea when I'm going to be able to do certain things. I don't know when I'm going to be back playing. Um, and so just having something that I can, like, turn to and have hope in is really special. And I I don't know how I'd be doing it without it. Like, yeah. I don't know how people yeah. do it. So, I mean, yeah. 100%. I feel like um, we all say these things. We all, like, claim one thing, and it's, it's hard because um, – once you go through something like this, it kind of gives your face some backbone, you know? Mm -hmm. And you realize, like, I need something to anchor me down because this could be temporary. Exactly. This this could be taken away from me at any any given moment. And so that's really cool and that's really encouraging for me to hear you say. Um, kind of want to dive into some stats re regarding ACL tears, particularly in women's soccer. Um, so every year that you participate in women's soccer, you have a 5% chance um, of having an ACL tear, okay? And so if you do the math here, you play all, all through high school, you play all through college, eight years, um, sometimes more uh, for, for some players, but you know, that, you're know you up to 40% now, okay? And so this is so prevalent in our game. 70% um, of all ACL tears are non-contact, um, and if you do it once, then unfortunately you have a 30% chance, so the 5% goes up to 30% chance of doing it again, at either to the same or the other knee. Um, and so, you know, it's such a big part, and um, I want to shed some light on it, and I'm happy that Sally's able to do that. 
um, kind of talk to the audience and, and give them like your big takeaway. Okay, so like if you if you could give them one piece of encouragement or one life lesson or maybe a silver lining um, throughout this whole thing, um, kind of what would that be? And then the second part of that would be um, kind of let's leave them on an encouraging note and say um, like what what's the thing you're looking forward to the most about returning? Because that that's coming up here soon. Yes. Um, okay. So. My biggest piece of advice, um, I guess this is specifically relating to injuries, but it could also be used for any other, you know, hard time, but just make sure that you have something that you're anchored in besides your sport because it could be, like you said, it could be taken away at any moment, um, and obviously for me that's my faith, um, and I would encourage anyone else to, you know, turn to God if you want something to hope in because you can get to a point where you feel like there's literally nothing to hope in. Um, so yeah, just make sure that um, your whole entire identity is not tied into your sport, which is a lot easier said than done. But I think the best way to do that is just um, to kind of, you know, see God's character above. Like, you can't look at him and be like, oh, God's giving me the ability to play this sport, uh, but I'm the one who's playing the sport, you know, it's all about me. Um, no, it's not about you. It's about giving glory to God, and you have to learn how to glorify Him, even when your sport doesn't go the way you want, whether that means you're not playing or whether that means, um, you know, you're not on the team that you want or whether that means you're out with an injury. Um, God doesn't change even when your circumstances do, um, and that piece of encouragement is just really something that's gotten me through. It's like, just because I'm going through a hard time doesn't mean that God is any different than He was when I was, you know, playing my best soccer, ready to come into college and play, you know, um, God is the same. So yeah, just have something you can hope in um, because obviously that's something for me that I know will never ever change. doesn't even matter, you know, what I'm going through. Um, and then as for returning to play, I mean, I'm just excited to play in a game because I just can't even really remember what it feels like, um, but I love playing. So that's super basic, but yeah. I mean, I'm just excited yeah. to play. Like. I'm just excited to see. I can see it. I can see it yeah. when you're on the field too. Like you're itching to get back and you want yeah. to be back with the girls and yeah. you're kind of over doing your, your own little thing on the side. And yeah. So. I mean, yeah. I think just, I mean, obviously I love soccer and it brings me a lot of joy, but I just think that seeing all the results of how much work I've put into, you know, coming back from this and being able to just play and not think about my knee is going to be super rewarding. So. Yeah, I'm super excited. absolutely, absolutely. Um, so one of the other statistics that I didn't mention, but I think it's super important, is that um, ACL prevention. So like you can do some very basic exercises um, on your own time or maybe even to start a session. And I'm sure if you have a strength and conditioning coach you can talk to, they'd be happy to point some of those out. If you don't, please shoot me an email um, and I can get you in contact or maybe send you some brief ex exercises as well. But um, so that, that can decrease the risk by up to 70%, which I think is great. And so, you know, you'd be doing yourself a great disservice if you weren't doing some of these prehab stuff, some of this ACL prevention um, exercises, okay? Um, lastly, uh, Sally's alluded to it quite a bit, but her and I are both believers. Um, we feel like, you know, the world is going to tell us no in a lot of various forms, okay? Whether that's rejection, betrayal, injury, anything like this. And so... It's so important that we're rooted and we're able to have a stable base. And she mentioned like our Lord is never changing. And so he's constant through the ages and we can lean into that. And so I kind of just want to end this with um, some prayer if you allow me to. And so I'm well aware some of y'all might be uh, clicking away at this time, but um, I, I believe in the power of prayer. And so I want to open it up f uh, to those of y'all who are sticking around and just uh, say a word of prayer over you. So, Father, thank you so much for all the blessings you've given us. Thank you for... Uh, the beautiful game of soccer, you know, it brings the world together and I think there's so much power in it. Um, it's so much fun, we get a lot of enjoyment out of it, but at the end of the day, the ball's never going to love us back. And so, we know that your love is amazing, you're, you're such a good father, and um, we pray that your will just be done, Lord. You know, sometimes um, the injuries come, like Sally mentioned, to bring us closer to you. And so, I pray that we're just able to lean into your sovereignty, um, and that for everyone that's listening that is going through ACL tears, that they just have quick and full recoveries, Lord. Um, whenever they're going through their operations, that the doctors just have a high level of expertise, and that um, it's able to have a high success rate, and that they're able to be doing the thing they love with their teammates um, sooner rather than later. So. I just pray and thank you for your blessings. Um, we ask for guidance in these times, Father. Thank you so much for just another day, another day to proclaim you as our High King. Uh, in your name I pray. Amen.
So, th Sally, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Um, so be on the lookout, more content to come, but we're so appreciative of the audience. We can't do anything without you. Um, I'm open for questions, I'm sure Sally is too, and so I'll be sure to put her um, contact information uh, here in the comments. But please be sure to like, subscribe, um, we're so grateful for y'all. Have a good day.